Watching wheels rolling heavy through the desert at night I've been driving all day but I won't shut her down tonight sit down with people and actually hammer out some contracts and one of the things I want to do is well let's start with you telling me what what am I looking for in a good contract uh, on both sides of the equation not just in regards to getting stuff to and fro but also setting stuff into motion uh, brokerage kind of work as well yeah yeah I do Mac. so um, let, let's do a little role playing here I, I'm glad you, you, you took the bait um, that uh, you're a uh, you're a trucking operation and you also have brokerage authority um, and, and we're going to call you uh, Jimmy Mac Trucking and Logistics all right um, we, we've just been introduced uh, you've been in the business for some time. Your your uh, your father was in trucking. Um, now it's getting passed down to you, and and you're looking to make sure that the legacy that that your family has built uh, with your trucking company and your logistics company is protected. Um, so uh, your family has done just an incredible job building relationships with shippers. Uh, and logistics companies and drivers. You have about 200 uh, trucks and about 400 trailers uh, in Jimmy Mac Trucking and Logistics. You have a nice aged uh, DOT number, so when folks look at you, you know they they, they know, you know right off the bat, um, there's quality. There's quality in your business. You, you've got goodwill. Uh, so so you're expanding and you're growing. Um, but, you know, Jimmy Mac, you're seeing freight waves and you're, you're seeing the news and all the issues that are coming down the pipeline with these nuclear verdicts that are hitting the industry. You know, you're getting a squeeze from insurance, too. Right? You're coming up for renewal in a couple months. And, you know, and you're looking at some pretty steep increases, you know, 30, 40 percent. Okay, so I was going to actually ask you know, a couple of other questions as well, but, um, you know, the thing is, too, we also got to talk about, you know, I'm looking for good legal advice on, in regards to, you know, there's so many new things that have been happening so quickly, uh, not only um, not only the nuclear verdicts, but also um, the idea of these tariffs that are, that are coming online. There's a lot of things that are actually happening right now, uh, and it's not the trucking that I knew even five years ago. So I guess what I'm asking is, how do I kind of set myself up in regards to contracts that protect me from not only nuclear verdicts, but all the other things that are kind of developing across the board uh, in regards to a trucking profession that, while is very exciting right now, also has all sorts of things that uh, could possibly be obstacles to my profitability. Right, right. So absolutely. So, you know, the first thing we, we, we need to understand is, and I need to understand as the lawyer, is what is what do your operations look like? And then the other issue is I need to identify what assets do you have? And then in addition to that, I need to understand what are your risk exposures? So um, to your 
point with respect to tariffs. So tariffs are a unique uh, creature, all right? They're a contract, all right? They used to be that in the ICC days, you had to have a tariff, all right? You had to have a published tariff with the ICC. Now there's only certain circumstances where it's mandatory for just uh, household goods carriers, for example. So there's limited uh, requirements now on those motor carriers that by law have to have a tariff. Um, so what a tariff is used for in, in today's economy, in today's uh, industry, is a way to help limit your liability in a number of situations concerning your trucking operation. And so a tariff, what is a tariff? A tariff is a contract. It's something that you develop uh, with your council as to how your operations are going to be governed. So for example, if you want to limit your liability for a cargo loss and damage claim to let's say $100,000 per truckload per shipment, uh, you can carve that out in your tariff. Uh, if you want to have any disputes that come about as a result of your operations uh, be governed by a certain choice of law, we can set out choice of law provisions in your tariff. If you have certain accessorial charges that you want to charge as part of your operations or have a set price for those accessorial charges, we can set that out in your tariff. So we can start with a basic form. We can say, here's the tariff, here's the contract. These are the terms and conditions by which people that engage Jimmy Mac Trucking and Logistics are gonna be governed by if they use your services. All right, now, let's pause there for a moment. That is not an absolute, and as in the law, there's always exceptions to the rule. A lot of times, what we see is that you have contracts with customers and those contracts say this contract is the entire agreement between us so jimmy mac trucking and logistics and shipper abc we're going to be governed by the contract that shipper abc gives you and any other writings or tariffs or circulars or bills of lading or any other documents that you try to give shipper abc is not going to apply to the relationship that we have when jimmy mac trucking and logistics is hauling abc's freight so in that instance your tariff which we've spent time developing and drafting is probably not going to apply because of what is called a complete integration clause or an entire agreement clause. So we have to understand what the limitations are of our tariff. But let's say you have another shipper company XYZ that you just do business from time to time or maybe you even have a dedicated lane but you don't have a contract with shipper xyz and so the tariff can serve to govern the relationship with shipper xyz because you don't have a contract in place per se oh, i got you but in okay fact, you do i got you. you have the tariff okay i got you the idea that what what the tariff does the tariff is all oh my <laughs> Like I said, tell me if I get this wrong because after all, I'm a client and like I said, it's amazing how many clients think they know and don't. But, so the tariff basically, uh, while not being a substitute for a good old fashioned ironclad contract, becomes kind of a governing principle when there is a lack of a contract in place. Is, is that what you're saying? It's okay if I'm wrong, I'm an idiot, so. So, no, you're, you're not. You're, you're very wise and it's a great question. Um, the tariff is a contract. Um, but contracts can be what's called superseded. So some other document can come over and control in place of the tariff. Um, we see that a lot in logistics contracts. We see that a lot in shipper contracts. So I don't want to give a false sense of hope that uh, in every dispute that ever comes up with Jimmy Mac Trucking and Logistics that your tariff is the end. Uh, you know that that that's it. It's it's the it's not. It there can it can be overridden. So you have to understand what the limitations are. But despite that, um, I would recommend that Jimmy Mac Trucking and Logistics have a tariff in place because we do want to have 
some predictability about how a certain dispute or issue is going to be handled that will come up in your operations. Bridget, what I'm going to do here is tell you that you're hired. I'm going to set up the appointment and uh, take this quick break and then come on over to your offices and we'll sit down and talk in more detail here. Um, guys, phone lines will open in the second half hour if you've got some questions based on the conversation we're having. Bridget, when we come back, just to put a little bug in your ear, when you and I sit down and meet, um, I, I just need to know what I'm bringing to that first meeting that you need to see to make sure everything is in order. Bridget Blitch, of course, joins us for protecting your livelihood. Phone master Dre, take us away. Maybe you drive a freight line or Cascadia. Maybe you've had a minor fender bender or even a major collision. Well, there's only one thing you need to know before you take your truck to a dealer. Check out our friends at Fitzgerald Collision. It's the only heavy-duty collision center in the country with a guarantee to get you back on the road in 10 days or less no matter how bad the wreck is. Now, the crazy part, if your truck's not completed and ready to get back to work in 10 days, they'll pay you $150 every day until it's ready. Whether you own one truck or 10000 these guys will work hard to get you back in business. Call pound 250 on your cell phone and say Cascadia uh, Really easy to install. It's quick, easy, and instructions are easily to follow too. Now when you're ready to end dropped calls, no matter the network or carrier, go to WeBoost.com. WeBoost.com. Matt, what would you say to other drivers about WeBoost? You have a cell phone and you travel a lot, you've got to have a WeBoost. It's nine day difference for me, that's for sure. Understanding of that. Uh, when I'm having my meeting with you in order to kind of protect myself from liability, which is the topic of today's conversation, before we get more into the details of what those contracts and what that kind of association looks like, can you tell me a bit what you're going to need from a person who is looking to create a contract with you and to take on your services? Sure, Tim Max. So uh, I appreciate you uh, wanting me prepared for the meeting. And, and what I say here is, you know, we're, we're not going to get everything done in the first meeting, and, and we're going to, uh, I'm going to evolve with you and as I learn your operations. So usually what I do is I'm going to sit down and we're just going to map out how your operations are structured. If you have contracts, let's say, uh, I, I mentioned earlier, you've got trucking and logistics. So you've got Motor Carrier Broker Authority and the same legal entity. So if you've got contracts that you're using, uh, like a broker motor carrier agreement or a broker boat broker agreement or let's say a ship agreement or maybe you've got contracts that you know you're not really sure about that you think have some risk exposure for you. you know, Let's, let's look at those contracts. We'll put it on our list of things to do to identify what those risk exposures are. Also, you know, I'm sure you work with a very qualified CPA um, and or qualified corporate counsel where you're you're located there in Louisiana. So you know, I'd like to, to get the contact information for those folks so I can get in touch with them and learn a little bit more about the tax side of your business and the corporate side of your business. Um, also, um, if they've developed an org chart, like for example, maybe you own some real estate that uh, you operate your uh, your trucking company on. So, um, I'd like to know what type of entity you are. Are you a C corp or you an S corp? Do you other own other holding companies, or maybe are you in? Do you have some other line of business aside from trucking um, that we need to make sure is segregated from your operations? So those are some of like some key initial documents um, that we'll, we'll look at, and you know if you don't if you don't have them with you here today, that's fine. We can you can appoint someone to, to task uh, these things over to me, and when you have an opportunity. Uh, but the point here is just to kind of get to know your your operations and to get to know you a little bit better. 
the other question I have, and you used the word uh, segregated from the other operation. Can you explain in regards to maybe liability, but also for the better business sense from a legal standpoint? And why, you know, and so many people, you know, and I probably am guilty of this myself, tend to have a couple of things going that are actually separate businesses or come really close to separate businesses that too often intermix and intermingle. Uh, there are reasons to make sure there are really separate, distinct lines between those places. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so that's really important. And I get a lot of that diverse of businesses that, that come through my doors, and whether it, they're in manufacturing and production uh, or the food distribution, whatever the case may be, but it's not directly related to transporting property by a motor carrier, right? They're not directly involved in trucking. And they're making money doing some other line of business. And from my perspective, my goal is to make sure that that enterprise is protected from the plaintiff's bar, right? Because they're gonna look at your company and they're gonna look at public records. They're gonna look on your website. They're gonna look on social media. They're gonna try to find out as much about you and what businesses you have to see if there's any way that they can weave those businesses into a lawsuit God forbid, in the event of a catastrophic claim. So if you uh, distribute burgers uh, for the local fast food restaurants in, in your community, and that's a separate business, we want to make sure that that's separate and apart from your trucking company. Um, and so it's a way to limit or cut off that operation because what we have seen um and this happened last year was one of the most largest verdicts that happened coming out of georgia is that the plaintiffs were looking at a shipping uh, manufacturing business that had a related motor carrier company and said you know what there was such control um, over the two operations that there was enough evidence to establish what was called a joint venture between those two companies. So even though, Jimmy Mack, you may have a separate legal entity with a separate FEIN, with a separate principal place of business, with separate employees, that if you start commingling those operations, and let's say your shipping company is directing your motor carrier company who to hire and screening employment applications that now we've created a, 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 a window, maybe even a door for a plaintiff lawyer to come through and try to grab liability for your, your shipping company. That's a that's something else I know a lot of people are always you know interested in you know we we, we we began by talking about you gave the bellwether warning of the nuclear verdict it, it's much harder and if I understand you correctly it's much harder for somebody to make the because remember all lawsuits are a decision people don't have to file lawsuits they're not like required every time they have a grievance to file a lawsuit and sometimes uh, from what I've been told by my friends that an attorney will sit down with a potential client and say there's just not enough here to really kind of make a difference it's going to be um, it's going to be kind of a, uh, a quest to get nothing we may end up you know wrecking this company but we won't get anything but if you in fact are interconnected with other businesses you make yourself more attractive as a whale to people who want to potentially exploit the system is that what i'm hearing Bridget? yeah that, that's right is that if, if you um have multiple enterprises and one of those companies is transporting property by motor carrier and maybe you develop that that motor carrier line because it's more cost effective than hiring third-party motor carriers you have to be very cautious about how that company has been structured um, and there's a lot of those large name companies out there that do have their own uh, trucking operation um, that I work with and that I know of that have to be very careful to make sure that they draw the line and that each company is their own separate operation and that there's no commingling of control uh, between the two, to put it you know, simply. And, and that's the kind of thing that after we've consulted, you would probably recommend me sit back down with my CPA and maybe uh, maybe my, my business planners and maybe figure out ways of kind of dividing responsibility between different companies to make sure uh, that, in fact, each one of them has a certain level of independence. And the words you use are segregated. You use the word of the idea of creating a real kind of demarcation line uh, between one thing and the other to make it look less like a... Uh, 
uh, less like kind of a conglomeration of uh, businesses all working at the central hub and more like what they really are, which is separate businesses that just happen to um, help the other kind of get further down the road. Okay, so I'm sold, Bridget, uh, as we head into the last five minutes of the first half hour. Can we kind of begin to talk about the ideas so that now that we've got a kind of a clearer idea of what, where we kind of begin, uh, the idea of, um, of cargo liability, can you explain the basic concept to me and then when we come back begin to talk more in detail about how we protect ourselves from as much liability as possible? Sure, sure. So uh, we we're talking about different types of liability. Uh, in the previous discussion, we were kind of highlighting the risk exposures for joint venture motor vehicle liability. But one of the other liabilities that you have as a trucking company is cargo liability. Uh, your default liability is under the CARMAC amendment. Um, now, one of the things I mentioned early on in, in our discussion is that you had broker authority and motor carrier in the same legal okay. Yeah, absolutely. Is that, that's, that's the argument on the other side. They're going to say, well, it doesn't matter if it's your broker only. You've waived your rights under this contract. You've agreed to assume control. So by you taking control of the third-party motor carrier, you're assuming liability for the operations of that third-party motor carrier, which, by the way, may not be Jimmy Mac Trucking and Logistics. It may be ABC Trucking. People who are my age, because I think soccer ropes are special. <laughs> See, you know. It's like, it's like that's the deal that Tesla and, and I have. It's like you take <laughs> Papa to the soccer games, okay? Oh, uh, well, take, that's a bit different. Take Papa to see T-ball practice, yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, we're going to have a great time today, and uh, we're going to have some fun, and you've got some things to take care of before we juice and get out of here. <laughs> About when I started my trucking career. Oh, was it? Uh-huh. Thanks, sir. Yeah, have a good one. You too.
me to get out. Okay. to drop this wagon off. Yeah, that guy come over here just now and asked me to open the doors. I said, I can't. I just have no way of uh, changing them. I got a wire on one door. The other one I was using my bungee. Did I pull that? Sometimes I forget to pull my Watch out! You gotta see if I pulled it. Yep, I did. It's just tight. Okay, water down in my plug. Probably from the wash. to the Bob Peel section. <laughs> Watch out! Watch out, buddy! your dog
Gotta go back to the right. Find out something, guys. Be right back. Let's go get our trailer. It's loaded already. Good deal. Let's get out of here. The guy asked me if I slid my axles and if I did this and I did that. You know, the thing is, this guy, the security guy, didn't tell me anything. Didn't tell me what I had to do or anything. So I said, yeah, hell yeah, I did. I wasn't going to re-hook to that trailer and do all this. I could have done it when I was hooked to it. But this, this guy never told me what to do. He never told me what to do except for where to put my trailer. That's all he told me. Told you he didn't do his job complete. So I'm just gonna pick up my loaded wagon and get the blazes out of here. This guy told me more where I got my bills. According to him, it's over here. Somewhere. Two zero five zero. Wait, no. One eight zero zero three four. Right there, one eight zero zero three four. That's it, right there. Okay, we found it. There 
is Richard. them there. I guarantee you'll be happy if somebody did what this guy had just done. I don't care if I gotta pick it up a little bit. He did good. He did good. He did good. He 
did absolutely good for me. All right, let's jack it up. Yeah. There it is right there. He did good for me, man. See, I knew exactly where to put it down to. I didn't have to pick it up. I was able to slide right on. Well, you can tell by the landing gear where it's rusty and where it's not. This is a Walmart load. All right. Let's go look. Oh shoot. We got wire on this one too. Oh no, I got the change here. I got a seal on here too. But they told me to put my seal on. While you're there too, what the hell? Change not long enough or what? Oh well, we got damage on the ICC bumper. See, right there. Somebody had to either pull him out. damage I see though both mud flaps are on it's bulging right there still hooked to the rib the rib is there pop rivets are still there This trailer took a licking. Looks like it kept on ticking though. It's a beat up rough trailer. Kind of weird how these tires are set too. That tire's in more than this one. And we start walking around with the camera on looking at these trailers because you, you don't guess you don't get everything on that inspection sheet I, I just want it to be shown that I did look
We're only 39,000, so. We're good, okay. Now there is a seal on the trailer, but we were told to put this seal on before we get to the guard. I'm not taking that other seal off though. I don't pull no seal unless I'm told to. So we're gonna put this right with this seal. And if that guard wants to yank that seal off, that's on him. But I wasn't told to, so I'm not going to. I reported the damage on the trailer and I got it on video, so I can't say I did it. I sure did not.
good to track. Yep. Can hear the sirens. 